Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. Today I want to talk to you about Artificial General Intelligence or AGI and Agents and ChatGPT with their new Agent Mode. You can see I've got it set up right now. I've got the Agent Mode enabled. We will see what happens. I have not tried this yet. I have a complex real-world long horizon task that I want the agent to solve and it actually has to do with going to X Takeover on Thursday. Yeah, I'm a little bit late on this. I need to rent a car and the situation is more complicated than normal so I will explain that in just a second. So I've got the question. <laughs> Actually, you can see it's a very long question that I've written, but after I ask the agent to go, I expect it's going to take a little while. I'm going to go through the announcement by Sam Altman and also the fact that an experimental version of ChatGPT just almost beat out the best math Olympiad human on the planet. In fact, it was in first place until the very, very end. Got a gold medal. It's a general purpose LLM or large language model, not a specialized version, and it didn't have access to any tools. So this is all very, very impressive. The big question is, have we reached the point of artificial general intelligence yet or not. So the first thing I'm going to do is fire up this question and let it get started. Like I said, I expect it to take a while. I'm going to go ahead and read part of this question. You can freeze the screen if you want to and read all of it. I'll kind of read the first part and then the very, very end. I have a complex real world problem I need you to solve for me. I need to either rent a car or take multiple Uber trips for my upcoming trip to the X takeover in San Mateo and then the address of the event center. And my hotel is approximately one mile from the event center. If I were flying in and out of San Francisco airport, this would in fact be simple. Just rent a car at SFO and drop it off again when I fly out. The part that makes this complex is that I'm flying into San Luis Obispo to visit friends and one of them, hi Robin, will be flying me up to the Bay Area in his Beechcraft Bonanza. As this is a general aviation plane, we'll be flying into the San Carlos Airport, again with the address of the airport, rather than San Francisco Airport, weather permitting, as we're flying general aviation under VFR rules. We'll arrive later Thursday afternoon, the 24th of July, and I fly out of San Francisco Airport at 11 p.m on Saturday the 26th of July. Here's the issue. Which will be cheaper and more convenient for me? Renting a car, Ubering everywhere, or some combination of both? I'm concerned about total cost, obviously, but also convenience, as I will have a backpack plus a carry-on suitcase with me, and they need somewhere to live all day Saturday after I've checked out of my hotel. What is the best cost convenience plan? And then there's a whole bunch of notes that you can read if you want, and that it finishes up with. Carefully research this problem and make me an ordered list of your top three choices with all pertinent links so I can simply check check out for rentals should that option be chosen and defend exactly why each option was chosen and why it is ordered the way it is. Thanks. So anyway, you can see it is working on that. Understood. I'll research the logistics for your trip to the X takeover in San Mateo. I'll compare rental options from Hertz, considering picking up at San Carlos airport and drop off at SFO. And you can see that it is opening the first result and it is uh, web browsing and things like that. So that's pretty cool. So clearly it's going through and it's thinking about this and it's also looking into how much Uber costs are. I did tell it to add 20% because I actually do tip for Uber. So, you know, again, doing a cost comparison, it needs to have that information. All right. So while that is going on, I want to read a few posts here. Today, we launched a new product called ChatGPT Agent. This was actually on the 17th. I'm recording this on the 20th. I had a whole bunch of stuff going on. I couldn't test it until now. And actually, I didn't get it until the 18th, even though supposedly I'm, maybe I got it really late at night on the 17th. Anyway, Agent represents a new level of capability for AI systems and can accomplish some remarkable complex tasks for you using its own computer. It combines the spirit of deep research and operator, but is more powerful than that may sound. It can think for a long time, and that's the whole thing here. It's agentic, and it has long horizon tasks it can do, and we'll see how well it does. I used to have all of those logic tests and having it writing and all of that stuff, but that's all just table stakes at this point. So really, it comes down to like, can it handle agentic long horizon tasks without getting lost in the weeds? That's the real question. In other words, could it behave like an assistant? If I gave the exact instructions I gave to an assistant, I I would expect any reasonable assistant to be able to go through these tasks do the research and come up with an answer for me and present it to me. And then of course I could act on that information. So anyway, as Sam said, it can think for a long time, use some tools. In other words, it has calculators, programmability, things like that. Think some more, take some actions, think some more, etc. For example, we showed a demo in our launch of preparing for a friend's wedding, buying an outfit, booking travel, choosing a gift, etc. So those are a lot of long horizon tasks. We also showed an example of analyzing data and creating a presentation for work. 
And then Sam gets into some of the, the concerns about using a product like this because it is a powerful product. Although the utility is significant, so are the potential risks. We have built a lot of safeguards and warnings into it and broader mitigations than we've ever developed before, from robust training to system safeguards to user controls, but we can't anticipate everything. In the spirit of iterative deployment, we are going to warn users heavily and give users freedom to take actions carefully if they want to. So interesting point here. I would explain this to my own family as cut edge and experimental, a chance to try the future but not something I'd yet use for high stakes uses or with a lot of personal information until we have a chance to study and improve it in the wild. So you'll notice that what I asked for was an ordered list with links and I did not give the agent my credit card number, for example. So I consider that mitigating the risk because I could have said, hey, go ahead and book it. If I had a very, very trusted human agent, I would just be like, yeah, go ahead and book it for me, use my credit card, all of that kind of stuff. I don't trust this thing that much yet because I have not used it yet. Over time, maybe if it works fantastically all of the time and it doesn't fail, then I will actually give it access to more tools like my calendar, my Dropbox, my credit card, all of that kind of stuff so it can go ahead and actually finish the task for me. At this point, I wanted it to present something to me, not actually go ahead and finish the purchase. As Sam continues, we don't know exactly what the impacts are going to be, but bad actors may try to trick users AI agents into giving private information they shouldn't and take actions they shouldn't in ways we can't predict. We recommend giving agents the minimum access required to complete a task to reduce privacy and security risks. For example, I can give agent access to my calendar to find a time that works for a group dinner, but but I don't need to give it access if I'm just asking it to buy me some clothes. But notice you do have to give it your credit card if you want it to buy some clothes for you. There is more risk in tasks like look at my emails that came in overnight and do whatever you need to do to address them. Don't ask any follow-up questions. That is a significant trust in your agent. This could lead to untrusted content from a malicious email tricking the model into leaking your data. We think it's important to begin learning from contact with reality and that people adopt these tools carefully and slowly as we better quantify and mitigate the potential risks involved. As with other new levels of capability, society, the technology, and the risk mitigation strategy will need to co-evolve. So clearly they are taking this model seriously in terms of the risk involved, but they also think it has such an upside in terms of its utility and its abilities that they think it's worthwhile. All right, so checking back on it, you can see that, wow, <laughs> it's going through a lot of web browsing. Oh, I think it actually might have just finished at this point. All right, so we have an ordered list. I will go ahead and read the other stuff after I finish looking at this list. Alrighty, so we've got the key facts gathered. It gathered distances and Uber fares, car rental pricing, event center parking. That's an interesting point too, I hadn't thought about that. And luggage storage, assumptions used in cost estimates, travel dates, tip, rental car taxes and fees, fuels, parking, I'd forgotten about fuel, good point there. And then finally we get to the ranked ordered list. So it suggests all Uber plus luggage storage as the cheapest option, which is really interesting. Two is the hybrid and three is the rent car for the entire stay most convenient. So unfortunately, there's a formatting issue with the page. So <laughs> a little strike. I won't count that against the agent, but I will say that that is unfortunate because I can't see it. So I'll use pages to demonstrate what its notes are over here. But anyway, that's really interesting. And it says all Uber plus storage is ranked first because it is by far the cheapest. So that's really interesting. Total spend of about $138 is less than half the cost of a rental car. Jeez. But the trade-off is lower convenience. You must rely on rideshare availability and pay for luggage storage at the airport. I believe I can actually probably do it at my hotel, which will make it a little bit cheaper. So hopefully they'll do it for me for the cost of a tip or something. So that even reduced the price a little bit. Second order is hybrid Uber plus one day rental. That's interesting. Provides the best balance. It costs more than Uber alone, but still saves over a full rental. You only rent a car when you need somewhere to put your luggage. Picking up the car on Saturday morning at Hertz's Redwood City branch, interesting, is feasible because the branch opens at eight o'clock. Choose a pay later rate so you can cancel if weather changes. That's really good because if I have to drive up from San Luis Obispo as opposed to flying, that's going to be a major change to things. This plan avoids paying for bag storage and reduces Uber rides. And finally, full rental is the most convenient but least cost effective. The three-day rental, because of course it looks like even though it's just a couple of hours, I'm going to overlap a third day, comes close to $360. Given that your hotel is within a mile of the event center and you only have two full days of activities, renting for the entire period offers little advantage unless you highly value autonomy or plan additional travel. So I pretty much agree with this. I think I had not done the research to find out how much Uber would cost in the Bay Area, but it seems like this is probably the way to go. And I 
think honestly, the fact that I can store my luggage at the hotel again during the day and then pick it up in the evening and take an Uber to the airport, probably the cheapest way to go. My gut reaction is the same as what the agent has basically proven by looking through all this stuff. So really cool that it was able to do this and it did it on its own. I don't know if it has a time that it actually said worked for eight minutes. So it took it eight minutes to do this job, but I think that's pretty fast. I don't think I as a human being could do all of this research as quickly as ChatGPT agent did. And just real quick so I can see the convenience and notes, you can see that the option one all Uber lowest cost, no parking or gas. However, you must depend on Uber availability and may face surge pricing, which is a significant problem. Luggage is a problem after checkout. Storing bags at the event center isn't an option, so you must, I don't know, it got cut off at that point. Anyway, two reasonable compromise. You only rent a car on the day you really need it, which is an interesting idea. I can go ahead and kind of blend this, right? I could just go ahead and rent a car on the Saturday if I deem it necessary and not do it if I don't deem it necessary. So I actually kind of like that second option as well. And then of course, renting a car the whole time is the highest cost idea. So let's go ahead and click on kayak.com because it does have these links here and let's see if the links actually work. So FAQ is about renting a car. So this is a frequently asked questions, not the actual getting the car. As you can see up here, it doesn't have the correct dates fed in at this point, so it's a little bit unfortunate. So I would say that the agent did less than a perfect job at this point, because what I would have liked is the kayak thing already filled out with the correct dates and the search already finished, so it could actually show me the exact rental prices and stuff for the days I would be there. So just as a sanity check, I'm going to go ahead and try this with the parameters that I actually have and see if the agent was actually correct in terms of the pricing. $360 $60. Holy mackerel. Wow. Okay. I guess it was pretty close. Although this one here, $209 for 18. Wow. Very, very expensive. 242. Uh, again, providers pick makes me a little bit nervous, but at least from reputable sites, it looks like $400. 382 from Hertz is like the cheapest. Yikes. I probably should have done this a couple of weeks ago if I wanted to rent a car. <laughs> kind of comes down to that because I'm sure I could have gotten it cheaper. But at least at this point, it looks like the agent actually has the correct numbers more or less for a car rental. And that makes Uber look very, very attractive. So let's turn back real quick to some of these announcements. Sam Altman is reposting here. We achieved gold medal level performance on the 2025 International Math Olympiad competition with a general purpose reasoning system. To emphasize, this is a large language model doing math and not a specific formal math system. That is crazy. It is part of our main push towards general intelligence and apparently it didn't have access to tools either. It just had its own mind, just like the competitors. And it had to run within the same time constraints. When we first started OpenAI, this was a dream, but not one that felt very realistic to us. It is a significant marker of how far AI has come over the past decade. We are releasing GPT-5 soon, but want to set accurate expectations. This, the thing that got the gold medal in the IMO, is an experimental model that incorporates new research techniques we will use in future models. We think you will love GPT-5, but we don't plan to release a model with the IMO gold level capability for many months. Sam in other places has said he's worried that people just won't be able to handle the model that good. So that's a little bit scary that that's what he's saying about that. But anyway, GPT-5 should be a stepping stone between O3 and what we get eventually GPT-6 or who knows what they'll call it. They'll probably call it Bruno or something like that since they're so wonderful with their naming conventions. But a model that is competitive with the most advanced mathematical thinkers on the planet, humans, has got to begin to feel like artificial general intelligence to you, right? It feels like that to me. And speaking of that, Sam also posted yesterday, woke up early on a Saturday to have a couple of hours to try using our new model for a little coding project. I'm assuming this is the experimental model done in five minutes. It is very, very good. Not sure how I feel about it. So yeah, it's a little bit scary to realize that basically these things are outstripping the smartest human beings on the planet. And Grok is doing the same thing. It's, it's as smart as the smartest human beings in like all the areas. No human being can be as smart as these things are in all all of the areas that they're smart in. It's really, really impressive stuff. And again, a little bit scary, not sure how to feel about it. And then finally, another quick post from Sam, watching ChatGPT agent use a computer to do complex tasks like we just did has been a real feel the AGI moment for me. Something about seeing the computer think, plan and execute hits different. And that's exactly what we saw. I mean, we saw it actually take in a very complex set of instructions, do a long horizon task. Yes, it only took eight minutes, but still it was pretty complex. And 
you could see as we were looking at it that it was just flipping through pages. It was browsing the web very, very rapidly, faster than a human being could do. And it was comparing different answers. And at least with my quick sanity check, it looks like it has accurate information and it's ready to go. It presented me what I think is the best option. It's certainly also the most flexible option. It means that if plans change and I need to rent a car in San Luis Obispo at the last minute, I could do that. Yeah, it'll cost more money, but I can at least do that. And I haven't committed to renting a car somewhere else. So I really, really like its answer. And I think it did a fantastic job. So is this in fact artificial general intelligence? I think the answer is yes, but the problem is that we don't know what the question is. I feel it's a little bit like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where the supercomputer comes up with the answer 42, but then the people realize that they had not formulated the question properly, so they don't know what 42 actually means. And so the problem that we have here is what is artificial general intelligence? How are we going to define AGI? The way we pretty much anybody would have defined AGI five years ago, these things are most definitely artificial general intelligence. They're as smart as the smartest human beings. They can do long horizon tasks. They're agentic in the sense that they are given a goal. They have a goal and they go ahead and proceed to get to the goal. They go ahead and figure out what the answer to that is. That is not a simple back and forth with a chat bot anymore. These things are actually going out and doing long horizon tasks on their own. I think that given a definition that pretty much anybody would have had for AGI five years ago, something like chat GPT agent very definitely is artificial general intelligence. The question for us now is, is that our current definition of artificial general intelligence? Or do we want to move the goalposts? Do we want to set them further back? Do we want to say it has to do X, Y, and Z in addition to these agentic tasks? And that, my friends, is a much more philosophical question. Definitely let me know in the comments what you think about all of this, what your definition of artificial general intelligence is, and whether you think that ChatGPT agent and or Grok or other LLMs have actually reached that bar at this point. While you're down there, if you don't mind liking the video, it really helps out because that helps YouTube's algorithm. And if you want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing so you can catch them. And I will see you in the next video or at the X Takeover. Bye-bye.